What if instead of the Americans, it was the Germans who built the atomic bomb? Germany commenced a nuke program before the US did. But just how far did they actually get with it? A lot has been written and said about Germany's nuclear program. On paper, the Germans had the upper hand over the Americans because it was in Germany that, at the end of 1938, the first recognized fission of the uranium nucleus was achieved, a must-have prerequisite for building the bomb. So, about the American nuke, we made a video with 3D animations that breaks down how it works. We're leaving it here for you. In this video, we dive into the German atomic program. Like we were saying, to get a nuclear device to work, you need to split the atomic nucleus, meaning you gotta crack that nucleus open and let loose the energy inside. The first time heavy element fission, like with uranium, was pulled off was in Rome back in 1934 by Enrico Fermi's research team. Thing is, they didn't even realize what they'd done. And the official discovery of fission didn't happen until December 1938 in Germany, thanks to two physicists, Otto Hahn and Fritz Stressmann. When Hahn and Stressmann let the cat out of the bag with their groundbreaking findings to the whole world, physicists began to figure out how to unlock the vast energy pact inside matter and then use it for both peaceful purposes and to build massively powerful bombs. To pull it off, it was essential to essentially kick off a chain reaction, meaning making the atom's fission trigger more of the same. Back in April 1939, a bunch of German physicists got together to form a research group known as the Uranium Club to dig into what they could do with fission. In the first few months on the job, those German scientists didn't make much headway, but come September that same year, right when World War II was kicking off, they went ahead and set up a brand new Uranium Club. This time around, the research was under the watchful eye of the armed forces, who took over running the prestigious Kaiser Wilhelm Institute of Physics. The project, led by Kurt Dibner, United Top Scientists, including Werner Heisenberg, Nobel Prize in Physics winner in 1932. Besides doing research, the group set up a test lab in Gothau, a small town not far from Berlin, with the goal of constructing a nuclear reactor. After all, Germany had all the necessary resources, albeit in somewhat limited quantities. The uranium that could indeed be mined in Czechoslovakia and the heavy water, which was utilized as a reactor moderator and was produced in Norway. The fear that the uranium club might indeed build an atomic bomb pushed American scientists and European exiles residing in the United States to sincerely lean on President Roosevelt, urging him to fund a significant program to create the gadget, thus kickstarting what would ultimately become the renowned Manhattan Project. The German nuclear program hit its peak in 1942 when the number of scientists working on it reached about 70. However, this program wasn't considered a top priority by the government because the bomb wouldn't be ready before the end of the war. Indeed, Germany focused more on technologies other than atomic, especially between 1943 and 1944. Built the first V1 and V2 rockets. The missiles, though, while they packed a huge psychological punch on the enemy, were pretty darn inaccurate and definitely couldn't sway the course of a war. In 1942, the armed forces relinquished control of the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute, which then went back under the protective wing of the Kaiser Wilhelm Society. Heisenberg took over the reins at the Institute, and he kept at it in Berlin until 1943, that's when they had to pack up the labs and move to other cities because of the bombing raids. The army, though, kept a tight grip on the Gatho lab, still run by Dibner. So what you had were two separate research groups, along with a bunch of smaller research outfits, all doing their experiments and studies till the end of the war, but they were pretty much at each other's throats the whole time. The German progress was way slower than the Manhattan Project, which, as we know, went ahead and dropped the atomic bomb in the summer of 1945. It's completely impossible to accurately say for certain if and how close the German scientists were to actually building an atomic bomb, because those plans were strictly top secret. Seems like they were pretty far off the mark, though. Between 1944 and 1945, the Dibner Group managed to whip up a few reactors, a feat for me had already pulled off back in 1942 in the States, while Heisenberg's crew, despite giving it their all, never managed to get one up and running. The Germans could have at best come up with a dirty bomb, 
that is, a device not based on a chain reaction, but still capable of spreading radioactive material. Basically, a bomb that's stronger than your regular explosive, but less of a big deal than an atomic bomb. While the war was raging on, the Allies didn't have a clue about the progress of the German project and, worried it might lead to some dangerous outcomes, they set up a bunch of military ops to mess up Germany's facilities and labs. They also kicked off Operation Alsos, which was specifically aimed to capture enemy technology and scientists. Two years later, upon taking control over Germany, they successfully nabbed the top German physicists and securely detained them in England. The scientists were still cooped up on August 6th, 1945, when the little boy bomb wiped out Hiroshima, and they were shocked to find out that their rival colleagues had managed to pull off the atomic bomb. A bunch of things kept the Germans from succeeding. Initially, the regime and allies made many scientists leave, partly because they were Jewish, partly for opposing dictatorships. As a result, pretty much all the top physicists of the time were hanging out in the United States. Also, the way they set up the two programs was way different because, unlike the Manhattan Project, in Germany they didn't put together just one team to work on it. In the end, the Germans' budget was much lower than the Americans. It turns out their project funds were a thousand times less than what was sunk into the Manhattan Project. So, for every mark they spent, the Americans dropped a grand. Guys, hope you enjoyed this story. Big thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video on Geopop Everyday Science.